Barrier comps aren't really as desirable in this scenario, so. No way. A takeaway Kha'Zix is not something we're going to see, <laughs> to be clear. A takeaway from the ambition that already has Rek'Sai locked in. Probably going to Elise again um, from uh, Punch, yep. and then they can still go Cassiopeia here from Itch, and they can get like some of the picks they wanted last time. I'm just happy not to see the Cassiopeia first pick, because again, in the first game, Sam Samson would never have picked it in the first rotation. No. You could have just grabbed it later. We could still just see Ground go back to that Orianna, however. Oh, he will. Yes. For sure. Rek he might face. Victor to mix it up, you know? Adding in Victor, the champion, has only played once this tournament. I was told you have to ban Victor every single time you play Crown, or he will always pick it and win the game. Did you know that he honestly picked it a lot in Korea, but it was it's almost never banned. It wasn't yeah. a frequent ban against him, and his win rate on the champion overall is actually on the low side. And did you know there are other picks in the meta he can also play and uh, win games I wasn't on? sure until wow. just now. I'm right. just saying. Hey, okay, they I'm locked saying. it in. How about a Kha'Zix? All right. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so far, Kong has assembled a very squishy Line. Maybe we see the negative side of picking Kha'Zix in oh. this game. Ah. Full circle on Kha'Zix. So Maybe. you were saying that Kha'Zix can't do anything in game three. That's exactly what I was saying. You were predicting the future yes. to be sure. Don't yes. worry, I got you. I see that. <laughs> so now Samsung going around uh, with a support Oriana. pick of their own. I like Oriana MF. It's great against like uh, Cassiopeia, but Kama is just much better against Kha'Zix because, again, the shielding is exactly what you need to stop it and from making killing targets. this is such a punishing lane because yeah. so long range on the Make It Rain for the Deadly Flourish opening up. So you're going to have to take something very safe. Varus would be the most safe choice. Uh, you end up pushing the lane pretty hard. Ezreal's up there as well. But Ezreal Zyra is certainly not the synergy of some of those other Zyra lanes. I mean, we've, we've seen this layering before, the curtain call with the Misfortune. There's just no way to escape that, really. It's like, where do I walk? to be safe, and the answer is probably nowhere. Now, the small thing you can say, though, is that every time Miss Fortune walks up for harass, there is potential for a root into a Kha'Zix. So there is definitely mm -hmm. a potential for the counter ganks to be really beneficial in this case. They do have the Poppy as well, but this isn't a pick comp to the extent of the one that Sam nope. was running. So Kha'Zix, does he have options for success? Sure, oh, but not okay. set up for success. Wow, okay. I mean. Samsung is going very much on the offensive here, despite seeing the Kha'Zix pick. They could have gone Nautilus top with Karma support and said, all right, we're building a team fighting comp that Kha'Zix can't do much against if he's behind. But they're actually opting into like very squishy targets, MF support, obviously, cannon top lane, where a Kha'Zix can get rolling. He can kill these side lanes very effectively. So they are actually building a composition where Punch could have a good game against it. It's more likely to happen. But as you highlighted, Papa Smithy, he doesn't have the same like pick potential setup. It's very much like a team fighting comp from Kongdo Monster, just with the Kha'Zix plugged in there. I'm not sure how this one's going to go, Kong. Do they need to play this to a T if they want to come out with a victory and keep this series going? Otherwise, it looks like Samsung might just be picking up a very swift 3-0 here. And they will, of course, win I Am Gyeonggi, but also punch their ticket over to Katowice for the World Championship in February next year. So a lot more line for Samsung. And if that reverse sweep the Freak predicted is going to come about, it's got to start now. We have a lot of pressure here on Kongdu Monster. Let's see if they can maintain their composure as they get ready to go into this third and potentially final game. Yeah, if you start making some mistakes early on, it might cost you everything, honestly, because it just falls apart. I do think, again, there are definitely ways for Kong Dumas to win this game because Samsung is building so offensive with their picks. All right, well, let's go ahead, load up into the rip for game three. Samsung won a game away from taking down Kong Du Monster. Summoner's Rift, Kong Doom Monster back on the blue side. Samsung fighting, shouting out pretty loudly in the audience, but there's still some Kong Doom Monster fans. And this will be the first title for Samsung Galaxy post Worlds 2014. That was Samsung Blue, of course. Sorry, Samsung White at the time. Now over two years ago, Samsung have had a very slow ascent to where they are now. Uh, they were the bottom team back in 2015 in the spring season. The league expanded to 10. They struggled. They slowly inched up. Even if you look at their pre-match record, sixth in spring, fourth in summer, finally made it through to the playoffs. And then, of course, that big jump at Worlds. And you wondered, 
Was that a misstep? Was that due to some of the competition kind of falling away at the tail end of that tournament? Or was it just that this could be the next contender team? And, and the But now we have a settled roster that is playing at this level. We already saw Immortals, other teams, playing with new rosters, good in some ways, poor in others. Does Samsung winning this tournament and keeping their roster make them the actual favorites for LCK Spring without any more information? Oh, that's going to be tough to say. I mean, SKT, yes, some new members of Peanut and Uni coming in there. That's, that's a pretty big it change. It is, it is, but they keep the most important member, which is Faker. And Faker has often Who been the recipe for success. If you had betting markets, where would Samsung be in the betting markets for LCK right now? I'd probably put them third. I'd go like SKT, KT. If I had to, if I had to go for it, and then Samsung third, but I can definitely see like bounce around a little bit. And to me, that would be putting names over results and over synergy, which has been shown to be very risky. Look at it's also EDG putting trust. way back in 2015 I mean, at Worlds. I'm putting a lot of trust in SKT. And Crown taking a lot of oh damage boy. again. Yeah, Edge trying to make this happen, but the second time Crown will be able to make his way out of there safely. Playing with fire, but the flash is going to be down as well as the Ghost Edge not having to pop any of his summoner spells. For every good super team, there's a long juice, so not 100% sure I'm fully sold. A lot of talent on these rosters, but Samsung, they look clean, they're settled, they're comfortable, they even kept their subs, so a lot to like about Samsung going into 2017. On Edge, seeming like he's very comfortable on this Cassiopeia. Yeah, Pushing at least now Crown should know. I mean, <laughs> he played against in game one, and Edge was super Good. aggressive. He should know. He should know. He lost both summoners very early on. So the thing about this matchup is if Cassiopeia ever connects Q onto Orianna with the speed up as well, she can actually start hammering away. Cassiopeia's problem is she often doesn't have enough mana to keep doing it. So she needs to get like the tier first and then she can play more aggressive. Because it's much easier just to sit and last at minions with your Twin Fang and get some mana back. But if you use it on champions, you obviously don't get that mana return. And the laning phase for the Cassio pre like a lost chapter, level seven, level nine, and more points. It was actually pretty dominant for the Cassio because it doesn't have to respect instant wave clear from the Ariana. You fish for the Q, you register it, and you see double summoners are going to be blown from your opponent. Now it does swift away towards the later phases. Didn't do so much in the last game, but there was some kills in the purse of the Cassio PR last game. But as you say, disrespected. That's down bot lane. The trading just continues. Yeah, just going to be a little bit of a back and forth here. Punch maybe looking for a gank in the mid lane, trying to get this Kha'Zix rolling, but little does he know he is just sitting on a ward. Now Ambition wants to say hi, comes over the wall with the tunnel. He'll get a little bit of damage in as well, but he's isolated, so he has to be careful. Actually, he has to flash away. Yeah, very key thing is that Edge can move down with summoner spells to actually join the 1v1. Crown could not, and that's why Ambition has to just jump out and not actually stay in here and risk dying 1v2. Top lane, obviously, QV is going to push in the Poppy over and over and have a great time in the laning phase. And when we do see these changes where they don't run tanks top, you often see the jungler put some focus up there, especially after level 6. You try and threaten the tower, maybe a potential dive if you have chunked down the Poppy to about 50% HP. And that's some of the changes compared to like just ganking mid and bot lane. Important note about that, it's kind of reminiscent of the Jace versus Maokai matchup we saw early in the tournament where Jace kind of has his way, but Maokai eventually can hit tank items and start to answer. There's no natural itemization for QV to actually be able to kill Poppy in the late game. Jace can just stack armor penetration, flat and percentage, and be able to pressure for the whole game. Even Void Tower's probably not enough as both jungles top lane. Yeah, they might be meeting here. And ambition's coming around the back side. Roach not going to find that sun into the wall. QV will stun him. Now trying to run into the opening arms of Ambition. Will make it back. And ambition now at full HP. Might be trying to turn this one around in their favor. Flash away by Roach. Will be a nice pickup for them. And they're just going to get a summoner spell. And we already see a very big difference compared to the Kha'Zix of the last game where Ambition didn't have to gank anything. He just sat and farmed up. He picked up a free blue buff. He got level six, and then he made a play on the red buff and, and started getting an advantage. Punch has now tried to gank a few lanes. This time around, he was tracked. He got counter gank, and instantly, Rek'Sai gets the big advantage. Ambition is a level up, so we just got to give all the credit here to the player, because once again, Ambition is able to really dominate Punch in the early game. And that sort of engage when you're level six and get the reset on the isolated target may be successful, but level four, certainly. No AD items completed either. Not the raw damage there to make it work. Yep. Bottom lane still going to be trading back and forth. We're going to get a nice crit shot in onto Soul. So I think we have to say it's really been uh, 
one of the biggest underperforming members so far in Kong Doom Monster in this series. Uh -huh. Gaze, he'll get the slow on the crown, but crown's just gonna ghost away. Uh, and to your point about underperforming, you know, is it in fact just Soul's actual level? Like, yes, he was better than some of the guys from North America, and oh Kube going aggressive. Yes, he is. Gets that slicing maelstrom through. Won't be able to find the kill on the road yet. Might be looking to die, but he's still fairly squishy on that cannon. And again, to the AD carry point here, like Ruler was such a good AD carry. If you look at Worlds, if you look at obviously the Gauntlet run from Samsung, oh, they're not done yet, by the way. Won't get the stun. Punch is coming over the wall. Kube, can he get the kill? He's a couple more hits, but Punch is here. He will get the first blood, but it looks like he might go down himself. He's trying to kite back, get the stun in. On to the Kha'Zix, actually he's able to find it, but... Oh boy! And a couple more auto attacks. No, that's gonna be the Void Spikes into the Q from Punch, able to get that kill, making a 1v1. But he had to burn his flash to do so, yeah. so Kyuve still coming out with some Punch did profit. not want to use his flash, so I invested. Got kind of enough times that, all right, I have to use now, I'll I'm just I'm done die. playing here, I'm done playing. Go straight for the kill. Playing with his food, almost cost him his life, which would have been very reminiscent of some of the moments in game two. But I think uh, the Punch story in this series is the same as the Soul one, where, again, Punch and Soul, they have looked good in the tournament. Soul, especially against weaker competition. But now when they're playing against some of the, the top players in the LCK and in the world in their positions, well, then they obviously aren't much better than them. And they oh can boy. actually get outplayed. And Ruler is uh, charging up the ulti. Yeah, doesn't want to hit any of them. It's yeah. warning shots. All right. He just, wanted, he just wanted to get that fourth shot to get that really big hit on the Soul. Because, yeah, I don't need these other bullets. I'm just going to intimidate you. But now we have Vision roaming down. It's going to be the root. Cougar. The exhaust coming through as well, but he flashes in underneath the turret. Yeah, Ambition taking a hell of a lot of damage. So, going to arcane shift forward with the Mystic Shot. Won't get the kill, but does knock Ambition quite low. Ruler flashes, tries to get a kill, but not going to have the damage. They get the heal out from Soul, but overall, a bit of a fiesta in that bottom lane. A lot of summoners being blown on both sides, but no one going down. Yeah, there is a chance that Ruler didn't actually see if Soul had used heal or not yep. in an early exchange, and therefore just went for it, took the chance, see if he could actually freeze him down. Crown taking some damage again. Edge sadly uh, can't move around the minions fast enough. Getting blocked down. Good guy minions helping Crown uh, not take nearly as much damage, but getting into the top lane, Roach to get locked up by that slicing Maelstrom there, about even on HP, but the minions are there for Cube. And that might just turn the tide of this battle. Now he's in vision. He's going to go low. This is going to be a kill coming through from the cannon. Gets the stun, gets the hit. And QB comes up with a solo kill. And the cannon pick, specifically against KT Rolster in the regional qualifiers, was the first time that QB started becoming this beast that he now is. He started solo killing someday, parlay that into a massive world championship, where some would argue he was the best performing top laner. And now the question was, could he make that happen in Korea? Could he reach that same level of play? Not great in Casper Cup. Had some up and down games this tournament, but back on the cannon, back to looking tip top. Yep, now 1.6k gold lead, gonna get stretched here as Samsung. It's about nine minutes, are gonna knock down this turret in top, get that first brick gold coming through, and 2.7 on the board for them. They are gonna be in a very nice, comfortable spot, but it's not so much that Kongju can't wait, make their way back into this match. Punch might uh, see if we can get a grump. Only thing so really. Uh, working for him right now. And we mentioned how Kong, Kong the Monster can't really afford to fall behind, also like just mentally. In a game like this, you're down 2-0. Nobody dying on the bottom side. Kong today trying with this ulti, but the fact that Roach in this one walks straight into just trading with the cannon, and obviously QA, what you need to do in the puppy matchup is just kite in and out of the Q on the ground. Oh. Punch did find QA, and he decides to jump away because he's pretty much getting destroyed by a very fed yeah. cannon. Took a really big chunk of damage being on the bottom. You can see the strangle thorns were thrown out by Gugger. did pop up Ruler, which may have just been enough to keep Soul alive for the time being. Deadly Flourish. Deadly Flourish does connect, but Ruler doesn't want to walk in underneath the turret just to land that crit shot. Would not be a kill, so he's just going to hold on to it and just maybe try to force Soul and Gugger out of the lane so he can deny them even more CS. Because right now, he's in a good spot, 12 up. At the moment, you just, if you are like Kordjidi and Ruler, you have BF Sword pickaxe, you literally just go in and you charge up your ulti and you force them off the tower and you can just take it down. It's been a really simple laning phase for Samsung all across the board, except for maybe Crown in the mid lane. He's been pressured a few times, had to use the summoners early, but QV is picking up easy kills on the top side. Rule and Cordia is controlling the bottom side as well, and it's just a matter of time before more of these outer turrets go down. And really, so little that Kongdo monsters can actually do when they're losing these lanes. You can see the confidence in the item build Kube was able to go. Already has completed the proto belt and just a bit of cull in there for a bit more income. There's really no pressure whatsoever 
from Poppy, who hasn't even been able to find a Spectre's Cow, let alone any completed items in the early game. Yeah, he's about 40 CS left on that, but Slicing Mantle comes down, Punch gonna go low, Proto Belt's away, wants to get away from Edge. Probably could have come up with that kill, but it would have been a one for one. Yeah, trading kills there would have been if he'd gone for the Proto Belt for damage, but made what he considered the smarter, but he doesn't want to pass over any shutdown gold or higher experience donated because he is that higher level nine. Have smart in the overall scheme of things, at the same time ambition. Looks like he'll be able to solo down the Infernal. I yeah, know where Punch is, so this is a very safe take for him. And we will have our first Dragon taken quite early in the game, just before 12 minutes. Ground roaming down just to give him that command protect to make things a little bit easier for him. But Infernal goes over to Samsung. Man, we can kind of look at it and say, can he pull off something? Maybe Edge in the mid lane, gank in the bottom side. Yeah, Cougar slowed up by the vacant rain into the deadly flourish. He is certainly going to go down there. It is the first shot from the curtain call, taking out Ruler. Roach TP's in, but Cubase here to match. Doesn't have the slicing. Maelstrom up. Can they find a kill? Dashes forward, gets on. Nice keeper's verdict, knocking up two. Ambition going low. One shot from dead, but the kill comes through from Ruler to try to keep his team in alive. More time coming out. Not really going to find too much as far as the targets go. Yuve, he gets poked out. He's going to have to back off as his ambition. Right now, a three versus oh! four. Oh, Yuve. Oh, not going to be able to dodge out. Had flash up Come on. as well. Dustin pop it in time, and he's going to go down. Roach, yet again, fishing for a kill. Moving forward, Benjamin Gate comes in, locks up ambition, slows up the rest, but a shockwave is there, pulls him in, but the damage doesn't come through. Soul, so many low members. From Crown almost takes him out. Edge out of mana. Crown sticking around still as his ruler. The Mystic Shot hits. It's not enough to take him out. And Samsung playing with fire. Just need to go ahead and back off, but they don't want to. They're going to stare down the barrel oh of a gun. That is Kongdu Monster and stick around. And a level 11 neutral Karthus would have got about six kills there. Or Karthus maybe could hit both teams or pick up oh, multiple kills as well. Zyro is in. Oh, no Come one, on. No one getting hit. And they are still there. Samsung. Just knowing their limits, really playing with fire, but they make it out alive, losing ambition to Cuba. This is where you like look at your room page, and if I only took three more AD, how many kills would I have gotten? It was just insanity. Ruler starts off, gets the easy kill, then has to cancel because Poppy was going to get into the fight earlier. And Cube not having ult, ult here would have stopped basically all the action that followed, all the inaction, given that no one actually fell down. Yeah, they end up actually walking away because ambition had to take a very annoying route back to safety where he took a lot of damage and now Cubit overextends the rest of Samsung. They think they can everyone pick up like one turn. kill. Yeah, everyone actually wants to overextend. The cannon has flashed. Oh, okay. Hitbox, to be fair. He thought he maybe just escaped it. And then we're not even going to show how many low health members avoided everyone dying from was there. Low. I mean, we did lose the ambition. It was a nice petrifying gaze to give some credit from Edge to lock up, uh, you know, multiple members, the remaining members of Samsung there in the bottom lane, but overall not a whole lot of profit coming in for Kong Du, just the two for one exchange. They're still gonna be down in gold, but it's not nearly as bad as it would have been. Yeah, but it's some of those small plays again where it's just not in favor of Kong Du monsters in this series. They're not able to pick up like two extra kills. The one time they did actually do it in game one, they didn't throw it away themselves just after, so. It's hard to really feel sorry for them, and now Kruger is uh, dying. Uh, well, he flashes actually, and soul pushing forward is enough for him to have to back off and cancel the rest of that curtain call. Punch arriving in time. He is able to pick up the kill onto the Jin, and now Soul, he's running away. Ambition's gonna be able to finish him off, but Punch, he is just gonna be honing in onto Core JJ, trying to find that kill. The making rain not gonna be enough to slow him up. And Edge is arriving. He throws out that Miasma, it's enough to lock him up, and now Ambition might be going down. The Twin Fangs just constantly pumping out from this Cassiopeia, now looking for Crowd. Catches him with the back end of that petrifying game. Oh. Punch under the turret. They take him out. That's four kills picked up for one on the side of Kong Monster for two as uh, Cougar didn't go down. Punch picks up a delayed triple. This game is so scrappy and even though Samsung's comp answers Kong Du's very cleanly in team fights, we're not playing team fights. We're playing sloppy skirmishes and suddenly out of nowhere, Kha'Zix has five kills. <laughs> yeah, we said this in Champ Select how Samsung being very offensive with their picks, not going for shielding from Karma or anything. No, it's MF, it's Ken in top lane. There are a lot of squishy targets for Kha'Zix to kill, and because this game has turned a little bit into solo queue now, which is a lot of random fighting all over the map, Kongdo Monsters have been able to find some kills. Soul going all in for this one, misses it, but then Kha'Zix shows up, and they're able to chase here, call JJ, knowing he can't really escape, and it becomes a bit of a mess, but Punch is uh, getting a lot of gold right now, a lot of kills. Able to dive in and it doesn't even have the reset jumps yet. That'll be a level 11 evolve, but 
Still was able to navigate around the fight. No tank frontline like you mentioned, Deficio. Not that the top laner was there this time anyway. Karzik's profits. Makes you wonder. This very much is a preview of the 2017 meta in a lot of ways. Imagine Courage of the Colossus will be toned down. Maybe tanks will be Already toned has down. Been right has now. been in the future. And I imagine maybe some of the tank itemization could be toned down. But otherwise, this should be very indicative of games, or at least picks that we'll see in the 2017 season. And you have to feel like other teams will try the Kha'Zix, at least based on this suit. Exactly. And it's just a question, you know, once we get into the actual season, Okay, call JJ. All right, I think that might have been a misclick. Once you get into the actual season and teams start like really practicing properly and they test all these different picks, will something like Kha'Zix work out? Or is it now because we're still in the off season, it's some scrappy games from time to time, like this one where Punch has been able to pick up all these kills. So far, it's working out two games in a row. Call JJ obviously wasted his ulti completely before. And now Kha'Zix is around the bottom lane again. No tower behind the guys from Samsung. Yeah, this is going to be a really bad spot from them. Uses the Blast Cone. Try to close some distance, but the Void Spikes won't connect. And then you wave cutting them off. Punch will just take a little bit of damage. And they'll root him up, but good by Samsung to keep himself safe in the bottom side of the map. They do have those wards through Kong Du. They're going to have to peel back. Not sure where Ambition is at the moment, so they have to play safely as well. Trading up top. Playing a little bit better. Roach actually has been able to put together constituent parts of some items. And his CS has been... Pretty decent. Obviously, the two kills down on his opponent, but otherwise, much more breathing room in a lane that he was getting dominated in before. Yeah, always the very standard thing for Poppy. You lose early, but then you get like one and a half tank item, and you can't really get killed anymore 1v1, and you just start wave playing. And that's where Kenan got to find that TP flanking for a team fight in the mid game. That's going to be the impact from QV. That's going to be the impact from the MF support as well. Samsung really want to have these big AoE fights. But right now, Cuba is taking so much damage because, again, he can't really hit Roach. He can't kill him at all. It's just a waste of cooldowns almost to try and take him down. I mean, his best itemization to deal to actually have pressure in lane is the Void Staff second, which we may see. But, again, it's not Black Cleaver into Lord Dominic's regard that a Jace would be able to do. So, as you say, oh about, boy. The, so about the team fights, it's Soul takes one bullet. Yep, fourth one not going to connect. The Arcane shifts out of the way in time for JJ. Going to go ahead, throw out that bullet time. That will be Soul going down. Ruler picking him off with that final crit shot. Ambition will try to make it over the wall if he can. He doesn't have the tunnel available, and he will fall. A sixth kill picked up for Punch. Now the flash away from Gord JJ to keep himself safe. There's the shockwave used by Crown of the Rome down, but not enough damage to take out this Kha'Zix. But the fun thing here is I think we're going to get what you were hoping for, Deficio. We're going to get a super fed Kha'Zix in team fights against a team that actually is up in gold. And can he make the same purchase work when it's 5v5, when teams are grouped, when Baron is being prepped for vision? That's the, th the, the big question we have about Kha'Zix is, sure, when it's unorganized, 2v2, 3v3, can Oh make it my god, Gugger. Damn. Getting styled on QV. Definitely will be cool to see, but again, let's remember, Samsung didn't draft the counter of the cars. Nope. They drafted yep. squishies all around saying, we just want to deal damage, we're up to zero, we want to have a little bit of fun, play super aggressive. And we're seeing that in this game again. This is not the standard calculated Korean style where everything seems to be planned out. Everything was fine until you got here. To exactly. Year. I show up and then this suddenly becomes like a classic Western clown fiesta. Ah. It's really encroaching on that territory. You can see the Thank you for up. sharing your culture with us. <laughs> yeah, we really do appreciate it. But <laughs> Crown picking up the blue buff away from Kong Doom Monster. Yuve will be going towards that void stat by the look of things as the amp tome and the blasting wand in his inventory. So maybe we'll be able to get through Roach a little bit easier. We'll have to wait and see how those exchanges come. We just want to see that, that team fight now. Come on, I want to see this Kennen who has Big TP advantage. The yeah, everybody. just get in there with the protobelt and everything. You have TP advantage for Samsung. Sadly for them, there's no dragon to fight over, but there's a bot lane tower they can play around and make it happen. Because we know Edge is going to roam, he's going to join the fight, and we know the Kha'Zix is there to fight as well. Punch is fed, but can he do anything against Emma Voltis, Shockwaves, and of course the ulti from a Kennen. If he finds the target split off, he can definitely take him down. I wonder how quickly he needs to itemize into something like a Guardian Angel, because he's kind of getting his damage put in. He's gone for two of the cheaper items in Phage and the Hex Drinker, but I take your point. He's going to take latent damage all over the place, but he wants to reset. He wants to be in a long fight. Again, a lot of the buffs for his Q are in a longer team fight when teams are starting to disengage 
from the 5v5 death ball into trying to like kite back on low health. That's where Kha'Zix succeeds. Well, trying to slow up Cougar yet again. He will take that fourth and final shot. TP coming through a mission on the backside with Punch as well, but they're going to go ahead and cancel that one, Cube. Um, actually, might have got canceled out by Roach, who is on the chase up in the top lane. The mission <laughs> tunnels out. We'll get out of there safely. The Spring of Thorns is not going to find a pop up. And that is also the exhaust used by Cougar. Yeah, or the flash, rather. TP was canceled by Cube. Ambition was behind the enemy lines, as always. And then suddenly uh, realized Punch was there. And then Punch realized Ambition was there. And they both kind of jumped away from each other. Rula is trying. He's been uh, missing quite a lot of skill shots, but I mean, if you just keep trying and trying and trying, at some oh, point you gotta hit it. Found him, takes a lot of damage when isolated from them. That Kha'Zix, even as a Rek'Sai, doesn't really have any armor to keep himself safe in that regard. Void Staff has been done by Cube, but still uh, losing out on a lot of these exchanges. I mean, there's just no consistent damage on a cannon. Even when you have five points in your Q and get the shorter cooldown, it's gonna be eaten by shields half the time. For the poppy, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not Jace. You don't have the same opportunities to try and shred a poppy, and that's why poppy, again, horror early game, but poppy is poppy, it turns out. Yeah, basically, Jace will itemize like Black Cleaver, Last Wisp, so, so your auto attacks will actually do a lot of damage. Cannon's auto attacks, obviously, because he goes AP, are completely useless at this point, and you just don't have enough like abilities to use. There's cooldown on all of them, you can't just spam them away on the puppy, and I actually think there's a legit chance Kongdo Monsters will win this game, despite being down. No it's taking damage, though. So. Yeah, gets a bunch of probably gaze out, not gonna connect on a crown, except for the slow. You get edge pretty low, and they have him pop that ghost, but he's also the flash available to him. Three members of Samsung now in the mid lane. Not sure if they're gonna be able to get much done. The wave clear from edge is gonna be pretty swift here with those twin fangs. Gets rooted out. Good call coming through. There oh. it is, lines up with the dissonance. Nicely done, Ruler snipes him right from underneath the turret. Roach unable to body block that bullet. They'll take a little bit of damage in this exchange. And now Samsung might just go ahead and tent up here in the mid lane. I just hate to be the Kongdom Monster organization on VOD reviews, but let's see if Ambition gets caught. Oh, uh, that he does. Gets stuck into the wall. Punch going to try to pursue. Won't be able to finish him off with that Q or with that true shot barrage. But Cube, he's trying to exit his way out from the top side of the river, but he can't make it out. Roach able to Roach charge his way to a kill. Yeah, and again, with Samsung playing this really messy, weird style here, where it doesn't seem like there's any coordination, Kong the Monsters will just have this puppy get to late game, be almost unkillable, have a really fed Kha'Zix as well, and against so many squishy members. Like, if Ezreal stays alive in team fights, he's also going to be a threat late game. So. I actually feel like Kongdo Monsters is in a very good spot to win this game. And a lot of it comes down to Samsung just fooling around quite a lot, but then also getting punished, obviously, by, by Kongdo Monsters. I mean, Monsters. to me, the word is disrespect, because they yeah, could sure. have drafted so much more conventionally, so much more conservatively, but instead tried to fight fire with fire. You've got a rocket launcher, let's get some rocket launchers of our own and shoot at them, rather than actually going for any reinforcements that should theoretically have stopped Punch's snowball. You can't play aggressive mindset and disrespect. To be fair, what would you bring to a rocket launcher fight if not a rocket launcher yourself? A nuclear weapon. All right, okay. But then yeah. you all die. Uh, I'd, I'd leave first. I'd take the plane, get out of there. It must be a very Send a fall guy. It's a really weird duel Kilios, you're fighting just, here. Just, just go to this meeting place. All right. I never want to duel you because you're clearly cheating. <laughs> All right, well, apparently Papa has access to the nuclear codes. I have a friend. You have a friend? One this man. It's the same Donald Trump. <laughs> All right. Lead's still here for Samsung so far, but uh, it hasn't really been growing at the rate that they would have liked. You can see it's just going to be 3K up. They did. They were able to knock down that mid lane tower, so it's good for them. Kind of amazing that Rek'Sai has more gold than the Kha'Zix. Uh, he's been farming up a storm. He's about 30 CS from a, away from a flame horizon yet again. Five kills up, no assists, but five kills up on his opponent. Let's you know just how important that turret gold, I guess crucially the farm has been. He's been doing wonders for them. Mountain Drake will go over to Kong to Monster. Just to be clear. So I'm not able to contest that. I get a fight, guys. He might be having a fight coming through into the mid lane. Roach gonna take a hell of a lot of damage just from Ruler. But Samsung. I don't really have anything to go for. I don't think they want to stick around for a fight. Actually, they're going to open up the curtain call. Roach charging up the Keeper's Verdict and will eject Ambition, but can they chase on? Oriana cannot get to this fight. Let's be clear. She's in the bottom lane completely. Spit off doesn't even have Ghost to try to get to mid lane faster. Samsung, maybe they're just using this to buy some time, get some damage onto that turret. As you can see, Roach roaming down. He will be spotted and ground. Still sticking around. Oh, still pretty healthy, though, so. 
Yeah, but they're all collapsing. Samsung, looks like they want this objective. The pink's coming out from Kongju Monster. They have their eyes on that top turret. Not sure if they're going to be able to find that. But that's enough to actually shove back Roach. But look at this, the Baron. There's so much Baron damage. They don't have someone to tank it, but Cassiopeia and Kha'Zix with a Mountain Drake. Oh, uh, Samsung, it seems like they have no idea this is happening. They won't even get the kill onto Roach to try to find something. The Baron goes down. That has to be devastating to them in their mental state. The fast recall is coming through. They can't stick around for very long. Oh, well, Samsung will get two towers in the bot lane. Kong the Monster said, we're fine trading two towers for Baron right now. Try and use that to get some turrets in return and really see if now they can take over the map for the next few minutes and again it's the same for Samsung it, it's some kind of strange calls it's like rushing five man bottling at 26 minutes the puppy's sitting there she's not going to take any damage and obviously Congo monsters just respond by grabbing a completely free Baron. I mean, when you see your opponent, you know, dying to minions kind of the other things that showed that Kongdu monsters mental state was in a bit of a questionable state you can get in that kind of comfortable Cube, area. Cubey, why are you here? Yeah, Cubey all on its lone step. Throws out the slicing. Maelstrom doesn't even matter. Can't get a single stun. You can never feel too comfortable in a final. That's the thing. It feels like they feel too comfortable. It feels like the series is already over at two games. It's not a best of three. It's a best of five. And Kongdu Monster, as the gold gets equal, as you mentioned, Deficio, Boppy outscales Cannon. The win condition starts to go out the window for Samsung. And we may actually have a series on our hands after all. Looking like it, they have a split push coming through Ambition, trying to answer this push in the mid lane. He's a good chunk of damage. Now the Kirk open up. Punch gonna flash away Ambition. He goes in, gets a double knock up. Cougar jumping out. One more shot would have done it, but he can't find it yet. Punch, will he make it out of the E? Yes, he will. Not gonna catch him with the captive audience, but he will be able to survive for just a little bit longer. Samsung, they do hold on to these turrets, but they get some damage through as well. Samsung has simply not been able to find a proper team fight because Cube was trolling up in the top lane, just walking into a lane that was being pushed by three members from Kongdo Monsters, and of course he dies very, very quickly, and he's alive now with Teleport. There's a few wards behind Kongdo Monsters, but they're not grouped at the moment. That top there goes down. Cougar, one shot from dead. Crown's able to find it, throws over the ball, takes him out with the dissonance. So they're at least able to pick up a kill, but Sol, he's out for blood, trying to get on the court. JJ takes him pretty low. And Protect will help mitigate a little bit of that. He ropes back into to the base. Punch, Phoenix Baron empowered. Phoenix moving up and out with Edge here. He might not be able to hold this turn. It's going to go down. Two tier twos picked up already with this Baron buff that Kong Doom Monster netted for themselves. They lost two towers, taking the Baron. Almost three. They obviously got all the gold back now. Almost even in gold, and uh, I like how Punch is just getting a little bit of everything in here. There's a Last Whisper, a Hexstring, a Phage, a Warhammer. He hasn't upgraded any of it just yet. We'll soon be able to go back and actually fully complete some big items. There we, there go. we go. Black Cleaver coming in. That is huge for him. Potential fight. And Samsung are still looking for that golden opportunity to get a 5 on 5 engage with their cannon flying in, but they simply haven't found it. Because it's always been them just splitting up and running around the map looking for random team fights or random skirmishes. Kong the Monster's in a very good position right now. I felt like Samsung got a lot of the advantage in the series, making the percentage plays, making the calculated plays that clearly they can at their best. But this game has certainly been a big turnaround on that. It's all getting hit. Roach, nice flash away by Ruler, making sure he doesn't get stunned in by that Poppy. Well, Punch and Googer finding ambition, whittling away. And him slowly, but the curtain call's opened up. Gonna be looking for a couple shots on a soul. Not gonna find it, but they do find that deadly flourish into the bullet time. He goes low, but they can't find the kill, and Sam's like, they have to back off. Keeper's verdict comes up, they knock out Ambition, but now that's gonna be sure. a big shot coming through. Ruler just ripping through that poppy with the crit. And uh, the Oriana split push is happening right now, guys, while wow, people are dying. Soul going for it, is able to find Ruler, but only people that one with his life. No, the arrival of Edge will help keep him safe. Punch making it back as well, but Crown, it looks like he might just have this tier two, so they will profit a little bit off of this one. Find a turret back for the three that Kongu Monster are taking. They're gonna be looking for a few more. Yasma already thrown down on top of that rip. Uh, on top of that Tunnel rush there, there, the Void Rush from Ambition. He's getting shredded out by Soul. Gets a knock up on the edge, but he goes down. The Ezreal, Soul finally finding his footing. Round. Some magic happened in this game. Edge coming forward. The last twin fake takes him out. Court JJ is not able to make it a one for one exchange between the mid laners. This is a silly game, guys. This is getting really silly. The classic split push Oriana 30 <laughs> minutes into everyone getting caught in the bottom lane. My, my brain. 
feels uh, fried, especially by of course. I mean, why JJ not? Why, why wouldn't he walk out there and die as well? It makes perfect sense. Yeah. So this is uh, this is a game. Gold how, lead how about that LCK level, boys? Oh baby! Oh boy, ruler. Is this uh, what we should expect from the spring season? This is exactly what you're gonna get. Every game? Yeah, every game. It's impressive. You can plug and play any name. This could be SKT, KT. This could be a telecom war happening right now. <laughs> this is going to be every single game. But now Kong do, like you said, and it's looking like they're probably going to be able to take this one out for themselves and make it a series, not just go down at 3 0. Rose going to pop them both up with a keeper's verdict. That's the fine gaze won't find much, but they're still going to find a couple kills. They're able to answer one on the punch with the help of that shockwave. Two shot barrage not going to connect, but there's still three members out at the moment. Crown for JJ, JJ, the only two living members of Samsung. Not going to be able to defend that inhibitor as it goes down. And might just be a second one here for Kongju Monster as they work their way over. A lot of learning points from this game. Kha'Zix overpowered, now we know to Fischier. Definitely, 100%. Uh, well, that is Kha'Zix, what we can confirm. Kha'Zix overpowered when you draft nothing but squishies, I suppose. I mean, it's two games, two Kha'Zix wins. Uh, one of them had lots of setup. The this one stats don't setup. lie. That's 100% of the time. Stats do not lie. So good uh, start from Kha'Zix. Maybe a ban in the next game. <laughs> oh, God. Could actually end up being a ban in the next game because both teams are like, all right, you know. We've seen this now. Leave We've seen it. It's, it's getting weird. Let's just get rid of it. Um, Samsung will definitely look back at this game and realize some of their mistakes. Trying to uh, probably refocus. For next game, it's definitely not over yet. Like a big late game team fight can still happen, but now losing two in hips makes it very difficult for the team with just a Rex sign front line to Especially actually win them. As Kongdu picks up an infernal drink of their own. The wards are the big thing here because there's still a world where Cannon shows up behind specifically Cassio and Ezreal. No QSS on either of them, and we get an explosion here. Some sort of Cannon ult into Oriana ult would actually rip through the back line. Punch two, not tanky on that Kha'Zix either. There is still a wall they can bring it back, because the gold lead, despite the fact that it feels like Kongdu have been kind of on a victory road for the last 10 minutes, the gold lead's certainly not there. They wrestled back from a 5,000 gold disadvantage. They haven't grown a big one, and their tankiness is not massive on Kongdu either. Now having both of those inhibitors down in mid and bot, that could open up an opportunity for Kongdu Monster to go ahead and take this Baron in a less sneaky fashion. Aaron's also another place where Kennen can rip through members. It's Definitely. very, very risky. They need a pick. That's what Kongdu need, but they don't really have pick tools from range, so they have to commit pretty hard for one. Well, yep, there we go. Get the board in the end, but Samsung, they have to be so worried because if Kongdu disappears for a second, then they have to just imagine it's probably the Baron going down. There's one ward in the pit. It might have been cleared now. No, actually, it's still there. Uh -oh. There's no control ward. In this pit from Kong to Monster, but they're just gonna rush it out. So anyway. fast. He's not close enough, can't try to get in there. Roach gatekeeping on the back. So that's gonna be the second Baron going over to Kong Do, and you have to think that they have every tool needed to close out this game. Top lane tower should be the objective. Very easy call when you have double inhib down already, and you got super minions, you got Baron buff minions, you got a puppy in the front line that can't really die. Samsung needs that big Wombo combo to really do anything. They haven't been able to hit it even once in this game. I don't think Cuba has been able to join a team fight at any point. Too busy minding turrets and then dying. Yeah, and then I think dying is the key part of uh, Cuba in this game. And it, I mean, it could, could keep going that way. He also just doesn't have the Zonia's Hourglass completed. Oh, big chunk off a ruler. He's going to have to hightail it back to the fountain. He doesn't flourish him on the road trip. Look at that massive shield. He'll open up with the curtain call, but it's really just tickling this Poppy at this point. Even the fourth shot, not going to do a whole lot to Cassiopeia. And the last inhibitor tower goes down. Punch jumping in on the Q bait. He will lock him up with the slicing maelstrom. Finds the kill. It'll be a pretty crucial pick that's going to open things up for Ruler and make him considerably safer. Yeah, Cuba actually outplayed Punch really, really hard in that engage. Had the stun at exactly the right time. Only a single Q came through. Stealth didn't matter, so does halt the push to some degree. No inhibitor take to inflict the third inhibitor down for Samsung. It yeah, actually just delays the game right now. Uh, Kong the Monster still know exactly what they need to do. So many open inhibs. Might be an Elder Drake that can play around as well at some point. Samsung now trying to hold on and see if maybe they can still win the game after so, so many mistakes. And obviously realizing what they did early on in the game. Not looking uh, very good for them so far. 
Samsung still just pretty much stuck inside of the base. You can see Crown all really far forward. Here comes Edge, gets the shockwave out. Can he find the kill? Ruler flashing in will help make that a one for one exchange. But Roach is here to try to follow up and get the sun on the ruler. Pops up with his verdict. He's going to go down the strangle thorns there as well to really just make sure he's locked up. And now poor JJ, not a whole lot of places to go. Soul flashing forward, trying to get this kill. Will he be able to find it? Not quite. He's going to get taken out by Ambition. All right. We're just going to go ham on both sides, it would seem. Juve trying to get onto Gugger to take out the Cyber. Won't be able to do so. Uh, but this could very well just be the third final inhibitor going down. Aaron empowered minions there. Ambition try to stop by clearing those out. But Roach, he's, uh, he's tanked. He's got a GA. He can just do whatever he wants at this point. And at this point, we're back to all star Papa Smithy where we cast it. We had some of these games as well where everyone just wanted to kill each other. Oh, Kube! Yeah, he's got the ultimate yet again. We'll find one kill straight into the Zonius, which is finally picked up for himself, but doesn't have a flash, doesn't have a way to get out of there. That's going to be Roach taking him down. They're going to jump right back in. Ambition gets the double pop up. Of course, JJ, uh, as the support MF just doesn't do enough damage to take out Punch yet again, so he will be able to recall. I mean, if you took off the nameplates and told me we were casting a hosted stream, like a solo queue hey. stream, I'd be like, okay, that makes sense. This is, yeah, this is kind of reminiscent of my, uh, my solo queue games. Are you the Kha'Zix or are you the Rek'Sai? Who has the most deaths? Uh, Rek'Sai. Well, uh, no, uh, kill no. me now. Uh, all right, I'm playing, I'm playing Ken in this. Impressive game, impressive game. I do play top lane from time to time, so it is keeping. So I guess we'll get a replay of this uh, Fiesta that broke out. Yeah. Crown was obviously a kilometer overextended. Went for a 1v1. Soul uh, seems to have been reading his own hype too much. A lot of nice comments about him on Reddit, obviously. Teammates also said nice things. Maybe only saw the interview watching the VOD back of the semi-final and decided, okay, I'm the true carry man. And <laughs> has Arcane Shift flashed into death at least once each game today? He's keeping it consistent. And that's one of the things that we ridicule a lot of players about is not having consistency. So, so he's trying to build on uh, that. But we also ridicule them for being consistently bad, so that's also a problem. Hey, I mean, he's winning this game. How, was How many games have you won at IM? I've actually won none. Okay, there you go. So Sol is about to win this one, and he's going to try and see if he can create a comeback. They got to finish the game, though, guys. Inips are back alive. The two of them are. That's only 2,000 gold gear difference, but uh, we're hitting that point of the game where it's really not going to matter. Everybody getting ready to have, uh, you know, pretty much all of their items completed. Looks like we have the five items here from the ADCs. So they're in, all in a pretty good spot. But now it's going to be on Kongdu. See if they can close this out. Third call coming up. First shot finds Soul. Second one, yet again, just going to tickle out Roach. Get a big spike onto Gugger, taking it down to about half HP. So it should be okay to just sit in the back, throw out those pines, and try to create a pick for the rest of the squad. Don't have any deep wards, so can't go for that big flank TP. It's going to be walking up QV. Yeah, they just have one of the brush directly above Kongu. You'd be damn sure they'll notice that coming through. Kongu just trying to poke out, and doing the best that he can with the poison, trying to shove Samsung off this inhibitor. Creeps pushing in from the top. Looks like. It might be going down a couple more shots. Cartier has had some very random ulties in this one, and they really needed it in the fights. When Cube goes in, you gotta then pair it with that MF ult, and you have fantastic AoE, but he ends up using it again and gets like two ticks on someone, and then everyone from Kong the Monster just step away and go for Elder Drake now. Should be able to pick that one up. And at some point, we're just looking for that last team fight that actually gives them the ace, gives them the nexus. And then we look at game four instead and see, like, can Samson now change up what actually went wrong in this game, especially, like, mentally? Because it was very clearly, like, a game where there wasn't too much focus. And you've been you know, making that closing out point a few times over the past five to six minutes. We've actually know that the closeout from Kongdu certainly hasn't been as clean as you'd expect. There's so many different prongs of attack with now, once again, two inhibitors down. There have been all three down at different parts of the game the last five to ten minutes. So it's looking for them to think this through. This is very much the three quarters completed crossword puzzle. <laughs> There's lots of hints here, guys. Just follow the words. Yep, that's an eye. Yep, that's probably. But Baron is spawning soon. Oh dear, that's not actually on there. That's next week's crossword. This week's crossword should just be N E something U S. Fill it in. You'll be fine. That's a difficult question, though. Well, I'm sure they're gonna to. figure it out. Uh, it's looking like it. You can see that three shot Ron's doing a hell of a lot of damage. Where JJ has to flash away. 
We'll have this Elder Drake buff for quite some time being amplified by three different dragons. So it's going to be a lot of damage coming through. As you can see the Mystic Shots really ripping through. Redemption coming down as well. This is the heal from Samsung. Be a nice little reprieve for them. So maybe they'll have to throw it back all the way to the pound. Recurrent coming up. Roach is going to boot out Ambition back in. One next turn goes down. Kongu Monster. Need to just commit to finishing the game. They want to hold the minions first, the Kilios. They got everything they need. To shoot that tower down real quickly. Samson will have to fight. And Cube going to be looking for the entry, but gets slowed up by those void spikes. Punch is going to go in. Sonius comes down as the slicing mail, so I'm not going to find it. Now the Nexus is exposed. Guardian Angel pops on a bit in. Shockwave on the Gugger. Might find a kill on the Zyra, but it doesn't matter. 41 and a half minutes. Kong Doom Monster. They do, in fact, make this a series. They say, we're not going to go down to 3-1. They take a game off of Samsung, but it's still a long way to go if they want that reverse sweep. The word reverse sweep can now be mentioned. Uh, it was looking very unlikely before the pick ban started here, but a lot of liberties taken by Samsung. First in pick ban, then in play style, completely disrespecting the fact that Punch could just be in the brush and get some kills. And once we saw a 6 0 Kha'Zix early in the game, you're like, okay, maybe Kongdu can do it this time. Yeah, also with the Poppy scaling up in the top lane. I mean, Samsung had a decent start in this game, had a pretty big goal lead as well, but then started picking these random fights to rush down to the bottom lane where they traded Baron for two towers and then obviously lost multiple towers in return right after. And Kong the Monsters, they can be happy now. They managed to secure another game that the only thing they could ac actually ask for in this situation. And suddenly now, if they're able to actually beat Samsung in the next game, you have that potential reverse sweep, and that's going to obviously sit in the minds of Samsung. I mean, often people call LCK games, LCK games games of chess, you know, very high-level games. It seems that we've been playing Snakes and Ladders and other things so far today. I'm ready for the chess. Let's maybe make this a chess stream and less of those other board games, because uh, some of these games have been uh, questionable, to say the least. That it has been, but Kong do they can feel maybe not happy over that win, but they can... A win is a win. They can be satisfied. Uh, that they did not go out to 3-0 quite.